Hey everybody, Ron Bass with another edition of Soar High Personal Development or Ron's, Ron's Mixed, Mixed Bag. Bag. My favorite. Your favorite. I love it. Well, here we are guys. Uh, we're going to hopefully inspire people. Some inspiration. Encourage people. Some positivity. Positivity. And a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Some, some fun. Some fun. Some, some pop rant, culture. Some, some rants. rants. Uh, you know what's funny is I, I do these podcasts and I think to myself, it's probably about 50-50 the people that hate me and people that probably appreciate what we offer. And that's Maybe. okay. That's life. Maybe. Look at the political scene like 50-50. Half the country loves Trump, half the country hates Trump. That's pretty wild. Yeah. There's... That, that may be a true reflection of this life in general. Exactly. Exactly. I think, uh, you know, you've got every... Uh, I think that one out of every probably like 10 or so people, maybe even seven, is like a hater. Not in the... Some kind of hater. Not in the... Uh, the the term like a hater just more or less there's there's someone that does not like you so i, I read an article today complete. about discrimination and mm -hmm. then the synonym of prejudice prejudice discrim discrimination same thing why do people hate on in a way people? in a way in a way why do people hate? we did a, we did a podcast on that mm -hmm. i think a lot of it is just kind of boils down to gives you a sense of uh, authority over somebody else because you power so poorly about yourself and so it could be black, it could be Jew, it could be big, it could be little, it could be old, young, ugly, attractive, rich, poor. So so many different people just look for reasons to hate. Right. And and that's just the way it is. That's having, just the way it is. Having prejudice, a more defined, a more specific definition is like prejudging someone because of what they wear, how they look, right. what they eat, anything like that. That's like a prejudice. Discrimination is you don't like this person. It's not a prejudgment. It's just you don't like this person or thing because of how they look, what they eat, whatever, blah, blah, well, blah. But I think blah. it's kind of from the same cloth. They are. They are. They are. I agree. It's, it's basically, it's an unfair way to operate. It's an unfair yes. way to, to judge somebody. Yes. I just wanted to add on. To Speaking that. of the unfair, uh, the Supremes. The uh, Supremes. Sure. Yeah, the Supremes. The Supremes. The Supremes. The Supremes. Uh, unfair that maybe the other girls besides Diana Ross, I'm not sure how much recognition they got in the long term. Right. Compared to her, she got, I don't know if she got most of the money, but I'm guessing she probably came out with more success than they did. I wonder if they're still alive. She is. She still performs. I'll look it up. Yeah, gotcha. be, it's interesting. And that group came out of Motown, which is out of Detroit. Motown stands for Motor City Town, Motown, Detroit, Michigan. Uh, who did we say the owner of that company was? We looked that up at least in his 90s. Can't uh, remember. Yeah, Can't he, remember. he's like one of the greatest producers ever. Yeah, yeah, he had yeah. Michael Jackson. He had, uh, I can't remember all the artists. So they were like so many successful groups that came out of that, that studio. It was unbelievable. Back in the 60s. Mm-hmm. Okay, so... so um, you're looking up. Yeah, The Supreme. So, was an American female group and a premier act of Motown Records during the 60s, founded as the Premet, Premets, Premets mm -hmm. in Detroit, Michigan. In 59, the Supremes were most commercially successful of Motown's acts and the most successful American vocal band with 12 number one singles on the Billboard Hot 100. 12 number one singles. Um, the original, let's see, it had uh, Florence Ballard, Mary Wilson, Diana Ross, Diana Ross. and Betty McGlown. Oh, there were four. The original members were all from the Brewster Douglas Public Housing Project. Wow. Detroit. Yeah, now they that's all that's something to think about. Yeah, really, How that is that? really crazy. Talk about rags to riches. But I wonder about those other girls where they're at today, and if they were able to continue to perform. If they all retired, if they're dead, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Speaking of dead, uh, Paul McCartney is in his eighties. He's got a tour coming up in Australia. We talked about that. Maybe we didn't talk about that. And like, um, it's just the Rolling Stones in their eighties. Mm -hmm. Mick Jagger just turned eighty. So that's, that's crazy. That's crazy, huh? That's Frankie crazy. Valley and the Four Seasons. They had some big hits back in the yeah. He's 89. I saw him perform the other night. But the big news is uh, who's the biggest artist in the same place? Ed Sheeran and. Uh, I mean, The Weeknd is. Yeah, probably Taylor, Taylor, Taylor Swift. Oh, 76,000 yeah, people. That's crazy. The weekend had <laughs> the weekend had the weekend had 170 something or 120 thousand over a two day show. A two day show. And uh, where was that at? Like in a uh, big city? So no, no, it was in another country. Oh, another country. Indonesia, I want to oh, say. Wow. And it was double the size of the biggest festival this summer in uh, the United States, and it had three days. Well, he sold did, more in two days crazy. than they did in three. Just shows you how music is. He's huge. Best. He's huge. The weekend is. 
huge. I saw some early videos of him, and mm -hmm. he was like, okay. You but, know who his little well, but who, he's he's not just okay now. He's like yeah. the guy. You want to know who one of his first mentors was? Um, Michael Jackson. Drake. Uh, Drake. Okay, yeah. Drake. Drake's the guy. Drake is the guy. Did so. you tell me he's not performing that much right now, or he's no? He's, he's on a tour right now. Well, he's, he's, on a, tour. he's on a world tour right now. Oh man! <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, he's performing. So Taylor Swift, uh, uh, they have like fifty trailers or something crazy. Wow! I mean, the show is like, it's huge. Yeah, it's huge. It's a pop show, but I mean, it's it, it's crazy, huh? I mean, think about it. They're thirty three years old, by the way. She's yeah. thirty three. I saw. I read an article about her. I think I'm going to talk about it on her other podcast okay. tonight. But she started at thirteen, moved to Nashville. Her parents sold their home in Pennsylvania or their business. They moved to Nashville, but she's a songwriter. Mm -hmm. She got signed at 14 at the um, at the Blue, what's the, the Red Robin, it's called the Red Robin, uh, what's the name, no, the Blue, what's the name of the little bitty club in Nashville, we talked about that, and uh, that's where all the songwriters go. Yes, I know what and you're they, talking about. Yeah, and they had a session there, and she was signed at 14 by this company to write songs, mm -hmm. but the gentleman that was from DreamWorks, that was starting up his new label, which was um, big uh, machine or um, Scooter Braun. Yes, no, that's that's another guy. Oh. This guy was starting up his own record label, but he came out of Sound. Um, dang it! What was the name of the company? Sound. Uh, Soundwise. No. <laughs> hmm. Sound Font. But no, it was a, a big company. I think it was like a Disney company, and he was like an executive there. And then he started his own company called Big Big Machine. Not Big Big. Oh man, look it up. <clears throat> okay. So, but the bottom line is, he he found her in this uh, songwriting session, signed her at fourteen, or she was fourteen or fifteen. So this chick's been at it like you know twenty years. It's not like she just came on the scene. Big Machine Records. Yeah, Big Machine Records. And the gentleman that started that was. Mm, I'm looking. Yeah. Scott Borchetta. Yeah, and so he sold uh, his company to, I think A and M or somebody like a few years ago. Made another fortune. And then Scooter Braun was the guy that bought the uh, publishing rights, right? I think that's what was mm -hmm. going on there. And of course, that was a big hoop to do because she didn't get to keep her rights. Somehow or another, I don't know how that worked out, but in our record label, that's never going to be the case. Whoever does the songwriting gets the credit. Mm -hmm. That's how it always works. It should work that way. Mm. At any rate, we're getting we're getting way off track. I know, I know. Yeah, we're but we're that's we're, okay. We're on a little, little pop culture. We're talking <laughs> a little pop culture. It's cool because we're in the entertainment business also, and that was our executive producer for our records. And so we're kind of off track, but we're still on Speaking our track. Not to use a pun, track. <laughs> okay, go ahead. What Speaking of uh, um, concerts and international acts, Travis yes. Scott, who really Travis recently Scott, yeah. released an album, uh, he performed in Rome today. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It was like a big deal. So it was live streamed. Deal. People bought tickets to watch the really? live stream. So he made a ton of money. I like it. Yeah, it was crazy, crazy. And then he offered a deal to sell you his album for five extra dollars. So album meaning like uh, plastic, a vinyl, no a vinyl. vinyl. I heard vinyl's vinyl. coming back again. It's so okay. So it is. Yes, it is. But it's also the biggest thing that musicians are doing right now are running these bundle packages. So okay. remember, I've told you merch yeah. is very important to some people yes. with big artists. Yes. So today, if I were to buy the $15 live stream ticket to watch Travis Scott in Rome, I would have gotten an offer to buy his album for $5. Okay. That counts as a sale towards his billboard sales. Oh, okay. So it just accumulates. So this week, his first week of his release, he sold half a million units Golly. in albums. Yeah. Last year, the, one of the biggest releases of all time was Drake, and it was 600,000. And he didn't wow. sell physical albums. Wow. He just, those were all digital. Well, this is a lot to learn right now mm -hmm. for our future and our record business. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot. I'm glad you're paying attention to all this. Oh, yeah. You know. You already know it. I know. Um, and you know when you get in those kinds of numbers, it's like, who cares? If yeah, you know, yeah. Another, another, I mean, you know, it's like, how much money do you want to make? But I mean, it's cool. But at the same time, it's like, you know, the most important thing is honing your craft, mm -hmm. building your building your trade, building, getting better. His audience is huge. At, he's yeah, audience he's is done huge. a lot in the past, you know, decade because he's thirty four. He he'll wow. be thirty five this year. So you know, wow. and he was biggest when he was twenty six. So crazy. You know. It's crazy. So, okay, the topic for our uh, motivational t podcast tonight okay. is going to be mental illness. We've talked about this before, of course, mm -hmm. uh, but I want to talk about some some very specific brain illnesses is really what they are. It's not mental, it's brain 
physical brain illnesses okay. and how it affects um, us and how it, affects, how it affects the the, the the patient and others. So schizophrenia. So that's a big topic, right? I mean, mm-hmm. we we had what was that other one we said schizo the person that um, is real petty. There was a name for that. Remember, we talk the, the ones that talk all the time. It's not really like mm-hmm. a, a brain disorder particularly, but it's a personality disorder, and it was called schizo something. People that just can't quit talking. Schizo. Mm, I'll, I'll, I'll look it's at not it. a big deal but schizophrenia I, I'm particularly close to this brain illness because my brother was schizophrenic and I noticed when I was a little boy he was four years older than me I saw these odd personality traits he was um, he, he was very um, grand, he had a lot of grandiosity about him and make a long story short he um, spent his whole life you know struggling with schizophrenia which is the symptoms are generally they hear voices and they and they see things that aren't real. So they have these um, periods where they go into the you know, They're delusional, and it's really sad. And back in my day, when I was coming up, they used to give them shock treatments. I don't know if they do it anymore, but that really helped him. Like every time he would go off into one of these crazy tangents, they would take him to the hospital. They they the the, the court because actually the court kind of took over, and we had to be a guard. I, my mother had to be his guardian. Go to go to the hospital, shock treatment, and then he would be okay for a while. But then it wasn't too much longer. A month or two later, he'd go back into these, right. this trip again, and he had to take a lot of medication to keep himself calmed down. Yeah, the um, there's like a whole medley of medications that um, sadly people with schizophrenia um, need to take. It's um, better now than it was then. Like yeah, in today's sure. world, compared to 50 years ago. But it's still a big problem. It is. It so, is. so my brother, bless his heart, he uh, then he got on drugs because you know when you have these problems, you don't feel good. Mm-hmm. You start taking street drugs. Like now you got now you got a drug addiction problem. And that adds and to it. Afraid. It just makes it horrible. It adds to it. It does. It killed him eventually. So, um, on another schizophrenia story, there's somebody that is that works for me, and that somebody has a wife who is very schizophrenic and. It's really sad, Davin, because this person, sweetest person in the world, but it's got to the point now where she'll be in my office and she's literally like talking to herself, but she's talking to somebody. She, you think she's talking to aliens? This is what, because she's been in and out of the hospital with, with the schizophrenia because mm-hmm. it gets really bad. And now it's like, I mean, I'm around her constantly. Not, when I'm around her, she's just constantly talking. And I said to her husband, what is that? And she says, he says, she's talking to aliens. So she thinks it's aliens. And she really believes it. Yeah, to her, it's not that she thinks she, she, is. she, she is. is. She is talking yeah. to someone. She'll and, talk, and she'll talk kind of like this. And, yep. and I'll, I'll be on the phone and I'll look over and she's, she's talking. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I feel so sorry for her. I know, I know. And there's nothing I can do. It's distracting in a way, but at the same time, I'm so uh, heartbroken for her because you know, she'll never be right. Mm-hmm. It's really sad. It is sad. I I had a friend that lived with me. I went to college with him for a couple of years. He lived with me for about half a year, and he lives out in California somewhere now. Um, but he's dealt with schizophrenia for a long time, and you know I talk to him fairly often. So it's bad, man. It, it is, and it's sad. It's so sad. Like, but you're born with these problems. You're, you don't develop. They, to, they say you that drug addiction it. can develop, make it worse. I, I, I think you're pretty well born with it. There's more, there's even more like, so the most susceptible are men ages uh, 21 to 26. Those are the most susceptible area to get it to, uh, to, uh, um, 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 yeah, to, ha- yeah, to manifest yeah. itself because of mental illness. Usually because you're, you're going through a lot, you're in a weird stage in your life, yeah. you know, blah, blah, they blah. They say if you so, don't get it by the time you're say 30, you're probably not going to get yeah, it. Yeah. You're usually, and I used to worry about that when I was coming up. It's like, I thought, man, I wonder if I'm going to be schizophrenic. But then I read that article about the age thing and mm-hmm. I've had, I didn't get it. But. I've had plenty of times where, you know, like it's, well, I'll bring up the uh, subject before you bring it up, but marijuana has yeah. been linked to it. Smoking um, yes. copious amounts while you're younger, yes. usually between the ages of 14 and 21, yes. your brain is developing. It can cause uh, serious mental problems, especially schizophrenia. Um, but there have been times in my life where you know a lot has been going on and I was not mentally okay. And 
there's been times where I feared that I would become schizophrenic. Yeah. You know, luckily it didn't turn out that way. So, but you know, it's well, there scary. is better medication now for it than there used to be. There is. Uh, there is. It's not like it's a different kind of medication. It's not like my brother had to take medication to like keep him downed out. Mm -hmm. But the new medications are more, I think, specifically, you know, very specific to the brain, whatever part of the brain that causes it. And I, I remember my, I told you the story about my psych, my brother's psychiatrist pointed it out on an x-ray. He said, that's where schizophrenia, that's schizophrenia. And he would point to the brain, a certain part of the brain. I'll look where it's at. And any rate, so uh, ADHD, we talked about that. ADD, we talked about that. Depression's a big problem. Speaking of marijuana, so I read this article that said that um, the problem with marijuana is that it does definitely affect the... Uh, um, what's the what's the word I want the the cognitive state, mm -hmm. and it also affects it also does help to create some depression like you said, and they also said that it lasts a long time. In other words, uh, and now people are vaping are vaping uh, they're vaping marijuana. Mm -hmm. So what they call it dab or dabbing dabbing or some dab. What There's dab. yeah yes yes yes. So in, they're in vaping marijuana versus uh, smoking like a joint. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it. I'm not sure if that really matters that much versus one way or the other. I mean, you're still inhaling. It, it does, still... but it doesn't. The the vaping, in my opinion, is not nearly uh, is a lot more unhealthy than the natural like paper and plan. But that's just my personal opinion. By the way, there was 39 vape deaths last year smoking marijuana. Wow. Yeah. Um, they say that the vaping of the marijuana is five times as likely to cause physical harm versus just vaping nicotine. That, I mean, that makes sense. That would make I sense. I thought that was interesting. I don't know why that would... Certain be. chemicals mixed with metal, the chemicals in the metal. So the thing that bothers me the most is that these, you know, the 14-year-olds, even 5, 6, 7, 8, 10-year-olds now up to, say, 20, 30, doing this, it affects their cognitive skills. Mm -hmm. And they say that it's lasting. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to be as sharp, supposedly. Now, the other side of the coin is... Uh, if you're old and you're sick and you have and you have cancer, you have eyesight issues. I've read and you have dementia. You can't sleep well. They say marijuana is a great tool. Mm -hmm. So that's the good side. The other side of the coin is that if you do it recreationally, occasionally, maybe kind of like a drink of alcohol, alcohol once in a while. That's that's one thing. But when you do it every day, mm -hmm. it's going to hurt the lungs. It's going to hurt your cognitive skills. Going to hurt your creative skills. Sorry, people say it's very creative. I don't know. You want you want me to blow your mind yeah, about the, mind. the the children and smoking thing real quick? Yeah. So uh, I don't know how it works in other states, but I know for a fact in Missouri, you can get a medical card at any age. Oh my goodness! So technically, technically, if you wanted to, say you had a child that's six or seven, and they said, "I want to smoke some weed," wow. you can get them a medical card, go in, and buy marijuana for them, and they thing. can be caught with it and not. Get in trouble. That's a, that's not a good thing. I don't think it's a good thing either, personally. That's just me, though. That's just that's an interesting fact that I found out. The thing that I see is that when a young person engages in alcohol, drugs, uh, cigarettes, they don't have the they, they don't see themselves, you know, thirty, forty years mm -hmm. later, and then the damage begins to start happening, and then it's just it's horrible. I agree. How it affects people as you get older. Are some people immune to it? Maybe. Maybe. But I would say the average is that the average score would be not very good for most people as they get older because of those habits. But, you know, I'm not here to preach. I'm just here to explain and explain the facts that I understand as I understand them. So depression, how are we doing on time? We're at 20 minutes. Wow. Well, we'll, get, we'll kind of wrap it up here. No, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So depression, I was talking about a friend of mine earlier today that his wife left him and now he's, he's, he's on the verge of suicide. So it's not, you know, depression isn't always like you're born with it. There are environmental circumstances yes. that create depression. Yes. But that's like a fleeting thing. The people that are born with depression, it's a chemical imbalance, mm -hmm. that stays with you. So different kinds of depression. But uh, I, I can see anybody being depressed over losing a loved one, mm -hmm. family member passes away, you know, your life goes to shit in a handbasket or hell in a handbasket because of circumstances and you're discouraged and you're depressed and oh my god i get that but that's different than being born with a brain illness but that's it's just as bad at that moment 
I agree. I agree. Jump off the bridge too. Suicide's a big deal. We talked about that. Yes. You know, a lot of people commit suicide. They Very just don't sad. feel like there's any way out. And that's like, this is my way out. Mm -hmm. And you reach that point, that's a bad place to be. I agree. But it happens every day. People don't want to talk about it. But it does happen. I think it's something like 30,000 Americans die a year from suicide. I think it may be even higher. I think it's 1,000 people a week. Something like that. Suicide. That's a lot of people taking their lives. Uh, additional facts about suicide in the U.S. The age-adjusted suicide rate in 2021 was 14.04 per 100,000 individuals. The rate of suicide is highest in middle-aged white men. In 2021, men died by suicide 3.9 times more than women. On average, wow. there are 132 suicides per day. Wow. 132 so a day. Yeah, so the average be, age is 14 people, like 14, age So 100 14. people at 150 a day would be, uh, uh, would be yeah, about, about 50,000 a year, give or take numbers. I'm yeah. Average, approximate. It's bad sad. deal, but, uh, you know, you can't save everybody. No. But I think it's important to try to save who you can. Mm -hmm. I agree. As circumstances allow you. And there's a lot of resources out there for people with depression. If you want to reach out, if you can get people to get to those sources. Yes, it's... It's sad. Yeah. I agree. Bipolar, that's another weird deal. We know several people in our loop that are that way, up and down, up, high, low, high, low, high, low, high, low. That's brain disorder. Mm -hmm. You're born with it. Uh, phobias, I don't know if that's... I think that's a brain... I was born with a lot of phobia issues. I had a lot of crazy phobias, like um, claustrophobia was a big deal. I, it was so bad for me when I was a kid, I couldn't take an elevator. I had to like walk up steps mm -hmm. and I remember <laughs> it's just crazy when I look back and I think about that and I had to go through a lot of therapy and a lot of counseling, a lot of medication to eventually get to where I wasn't that way anymore. But even today, I still have a little bit of concern when I go into an elevator or I get into an airplane. It's not perfect, but it's manageable. Right. right. So that's, that's the good news. If you have problems like this, there are ways to at least manage to where you can function as a normal human being. Yes, normal yes, human being. Yes. And you don't have to like sit in the corner somewhere with your hands over your head face go, oh my God. <laughs> which, is, which is what I, I remember, I told you the story, pulling into the airport one time and sitting in my car, I couldn't get out of the car. That's crazy when I look back on that, but that just shows you how, you know, you can be that screwed up, and, but you can't overcome it. Exactly. Now I get on an airplane, I get on an airplane, I get, I get on airplanes all the time. Exactly. Um, so, Medica how, do, how do you, you know, what's, what, what's, what's it going to take to help people? Medication, counseling, exercise. Exercise. <laughs> exercise is good sleep. because sleep, mm -hmm. big deal, man. But sleep up there for sure. If you don't sleep well. You can't do anything. If you do not have, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry, I yeah. agree with you that exercise does play a part into good sleep and good mental health. But yes. if you don't have good sleep and good mental health, you're not even going to want to get out of bed to go work out. That's right. You know, yeah, that's, that's true. That's my biggest thing. Like, you need to get sleep and you need to take care of your mind. Yes. That is the biggest thing. That is, those are the two biggest things in my yes. opinion. Then after that, exercise, for sure. I had a guy in my dojo tonight. And the music. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and the music, right. Music's medicine, man. Had a guy in my dojo tonight that um, called me the other day and he kept his word. He showed up tonight. Mm -hmm. He trained 10 years ago. <clears throat> and he's gained 80 pounds. He's 280 pounds. He was 200 when he trained 10 years ago. And I asked him, I said, what caused it? He said, oh, man, I got married. I had children and my job, and I, and I just got out of the loop mm -hmm. and, because I didn't, and, I'm not, and I don't exercise. Right. And I said, well, you know what? You're definitely on the right track to come in, at least to get started. Exactly. And, but I said, be patient. Give yourself a year to lose some weight and mm -hmm. get back into the routine of exercise. And, and he actually got in tonight and actually did some rolling tonight, some nice. riding. And he... Uh, he said, man, I'm out of breath. I said, well, I'm sure you're not surprised. He said, yeah. no, I'm not surprised no. at all. But he did get in there, and he did he did make, and I thought, that's really cool. That's good. And yeah. then here in like three, four months, he's going to not be out of breath. Right. Working out real hard. Yes. Losing the weight like he wants. If he know. stays. If he stays. If he sticks to it. If he sticks to it. And if he know, sticks to it. It's not up to us. No. All we can do is inspire people, encourage people, set a good example. Exactly. That's our job. I agree. Yep. Our job is not, to, problems not to beat them over the head and make them do anything. They're not going to do it anyway. They're going to do what they want to do regardless of what we want. Regardless. And people get frustrated all the time because 
oh, I tried to help my mother, my brother, my father, my son, and they just won't listen to me. They're not going to listen to you because you're beating them over the head. They don't. That's not how it works. You have to be patient and you have to set the example, and then it's up to them. It's not your problem. It's their problem. You've done everything you're supposed to do. That's then. That's it. That's how I look at it. I agree with you. I agree with you. At any rate, so much for all that. We could go on and on about it, but uh, we're at 25 minutes. 25 you got. minutes. Yeah. So I think uh, one last thing is autism. Um, I'm not really sure how that works. I know it's a brain disorder. Man, I have a friend of mine that's got a 25, six, seven year old uh, autistic child, and this kid is like, he's raised him from you know birth. Mm -hmm. It's a full-time job. Super. But he is stuck with this kid through thick and thin. He's probably one of the nicest guys you've ever met. Huh? But, but this kid, man, he's like bad. I mean, he like, he'll get up in the middle of the night and bang his head on the table. And, yep. And, and he won't eat for three or four nope. days at a time. And it's crazy stuff. Yep. And my friend is like so dedicated to this child. That's that's a powerful thing. That is, yeah. That is. I. Uh, you know how we feel about children personally but uh yes you know i commend anyone that can raise a child on their own wow man well at any rate i guess we'll kind of wrap it up any closing thoughts sir uh give me one rant i want i want you, you want one rant? rant as my closing thought okay let's talk about uh okay i'll give you a rant so the other night i'm leaving my office and it's late and some kids walking down the down the, the alleyway with, with like a blanket over his head. And he's, he's just screaming and yelling and hooping and hollering. Uh -huh. And I'm driving by, I looked at him and he, and he starts like cussing at me. Right here, this one? Yeah. He's like, you got a problem? And I said, I don't have a problem, man. You got a problem? He says, yeah, I got a problem. You're my problem. Something like that. And I thought about getting out of my car and I said to myself, you know, it's probably not worth it. But, you know, it's easy to get angry, right? Because yeah, it's like yeah. crazy. But I'm thinking to myself, and then I saw another kid walking down the street a couple hours later by a Wendy's, and he was like, you know, he was like shadow boxing. He had no shirt on, and he was just walking, the young guy, walking down the street, looked like he wanted to fight somebody. And I'm thinking, people have gone crazy, man. They just, um, everybody wants to fight. Everybody's on drugs. That's probably Everybody's on fucking drugs. That's probably what it is, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, so that's my rant. It's like, hey, you know what? Get it together, man. Yeah, like have, have a little dis have, have a little courtesy, a little discipline. Like the dude that threatened to shoot us for being at our yeah. Remember business. all that? You tell that rant. You do so that we pull up, and uh, I drive a newer vehicle, so the lights look like police officer lights. And we pull up, and he's obviously doing drugs, probably shooting up mm -hmm. in the corner, bent over, doing his thing. And we pull up, windows are down. And he's like, hey. What are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. And we're like, this is our business. Like, it's okay. Relax. We're not going to kick you out. Just like, you know, like, yeah. whatever. Do, like, do whatever you're doing. Leave us alone. And he was like, well, you guys want to get shot. Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, what? We aren't doing anything <laughs> to you. Anything. We are not bothering you. You're not. Just do your thing. He's in our space. He's That's in what our, I'm saying. Our yeah. Space. Yeah. Exactly. But they everybody just wants to be huge and big and yeah, important. Mr. Macho. Mr. Macho, yeah. And it's just like... And he said something to me like, uh, I said, this is our business. He says, well, you know what? When, if you're dead, you're not going to have a business. Yeah, I so I said something like, hey, any day is a good day to die. And like, then he finally drove off on his bicycle. He, didn't, yeah, he was on a bicycle. Off, rode off on his bicycle. Yeah. So he has a gun that cost... Never mind, never mind. Whatever. Never mind, never mind. But anyway, that's our rant. It's like... <laughs> it's like Come on, man. Chill out. Relax. Yeah, literally. Get a just, job. Just relax. Go to the gym. I got another rant for you. Do okay. we, have to, uh, we don't have time. I'll tell you after the podcast. Okay. It's All okay. Right. All right. We don't have time. All right. Well, I guess if that's the case and we're going to get out of here, it's like, okay, guys, appreciate you joining us tonight. So here's the deal, man. Hang in there. Stay the course. And until next time, stay positive. <laughs>